Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, September 3rd, and as you see um, by the title of this video, I am going to talk about um, my plans for postpartum meals. Um, sorry, I'm looking a little drab, um, just trying to relax. Nausea has been... Um, getting the best of me for the past couple of days and yeah I'm just so glad that I'm almost at the end because um, I'm pretty much sick until the end but lately it's just been more so and then um, and the babies have had the sniffles and running noses and coughs and so now I have I'm not really sick but I have an irritated throat and the sniffles, so I'm just, uh, I think it could be worse, but I'm miserable. Anywho, um, and I'll do a, a, um, pregnancy update vlog probably after this, because I do have a doctor's appointment, and it was a whole week ago, but um, <clears throat> I was doing a lot last weekend, who so uh, let's see. Um, I don't know, I don't really have a, a stealth plan, so to speak, because my girls are old enough to cook, so. Boy. Um, I don't have to worry too much about making sure that I have things, you know, a whole bunch of things frozen and, um, you know, ready to heat up too much because they know how to cook. And that, um, I'm very fortunate. I am going to have a cesarean, so I will be out of commission and definitely for a week. Um, and the one thing I'm trying to uh, avoid is having an extended stay in the hospital and what I mean is um, last time last year when I had the baby I went in for a doctor's appointment and uh, my blood pressure was high and so after a couple checks um, you know the doctor told me well we're gonna send you next door to the hospital let them monitor you for an hour and um, you know, if it doesn't go down, I'm going to deliver you today. So, um, at that point, you know, I said okay, and I already knew what was going to happen. <clears throat> and uh, it was a matter of three hours, and I had a baby. And, um, you know, I really didn't have a choice. But as far as home, it was it was chaos because it was my son's birthday. And um, I hadn't even gone to the store to get a cake because I was not going to make one. But um, I hadn't even gone to the grocery store, period. That was the day I planned on doing grocery shopping because I knew that that would be my last time. So, um, yeah, it was, it was quite chaos because, you know, it was the end of the month and there was pretty much not that much left in there. Um, pantry, freezer, fridge, you know, whatever. But they managed, um, they ate. I don't know, my husband um, took care of everything. They ate pizza, chicken, wings, um, whatever. I don't know, they ate. They, they didn't complain. Um, you know, but it's crazy for him because they have enough to jump in and you know, take care of everything at once like that without having plans. I didn't even have a bag because I was just going for a, a, a checkup. So it was kind of crazy. But, um, you know, nobody panicked. I made the list while I was in the hospital and the grocery list, and they came and got the grocery list. And the girls did the grocery shopping. Well, one of them did. 
And, uh, you know, that's happened before. And no problem. You know, the girls know how to go to the grocery store. That's why I take them with me periodically um, so that everybody knows how to go grocery shopping. They know what to buy, what, you know, what to do with it, and um, how much to buy. So I don't have any problem. So what I'm going to do this time, um, say, I'll probably go to the store Saturday. Um, I know it was busy this weekend and probably for the next couple of days. Um, you know, people doing holiday shopping and stuff like that. But I'll probably wait till Saturday, maybe Friday, because I know Saturday will be pretty busy. But, um, yeah, Friday will be a good time, probably Friday morning. <clears throat> I'll go. Yeah, so I need to get started on my list. But I'll just start stockpiling, you know, a little bit of, I would say, um, staples. You know, here and there, things that I know I'm going to need, like different type of ingredients, maybe um, spaghetti sauce, tomato sauce, things like that, um, that I know the girls will not want to, you know, they don't know how to do homemade. So, you know, things like that, um, chili, they want chili dogs and nachos and stuff like that. Um, I just start stockpiling stuff like that. Because uh, my plan is to go as long as I can. And I'll really be ready at the end of November. I will try. I, ideally, I would like to make it to December 16th. But um, I know that, that, you know, that's not me. That would be really convenient because the kids are going to be getting out of school I think that week or a couple of days after that so they'll be home anyways but um, I'm already at the point where I'm just I'm ready to go now I am so over this guys it's just seems to be dragging which I knew um, this month was going to drag anyway I already said it a long time ago I said September's going to drag because I'm pretty much, you know, last three months, and that really means two months for me, but, you know, it's just going to drag. So, um, yeah, but I know I'm not going to make it that long. Uh, I'm going to try to go as long as I can, though. Um, but I know exactly what to do to get in the hospital and get delivered when I want, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, I'll try to do that, but I'm going to try to avoid that, um, extended stay in the hospital, what, I, and, you know, what I did, like I said, the day I went in for the, for the, uh, checkup, I had the baby, that was a Monday, I was released on Thursday, and, or actually Friday, um, had a cesarean like it, you know, the rest of my deliveries. But um, the baby stayed, and what I did was roomed in in um, labor and delivery room with her because she was small. She was 36 and three days, but just small. She was four pounds, three ounces. And I think she probably dropped down to four, one at the least um so we were trying to get her you know make sure she was eating okay and get her body temperature regulated um for the next couple of days so we did not end up leaving the hospital till that monday and um you know monday monday that's a long time to be in the hospital <clears throat> but um everything was fine and, um, you know, by the time I came home, you know, there was groceries and things like that. I think we were still eating out a little bit. Well, I wasn't eating because, lo and behold, I had some serious issues to where I couldn't eat. Um, and that was a mess. But, um, so what I, what I, um, what I plan on doing is n instead of, you know, spending days 
cooking up a whole bunch of meals and casseroles and things and freezing it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to <clears throat> basically make a couple shopping trips to where I'm just buying meat. And I'm going to cook up all the meat. That's pretty much kind of, you know, what I do now. I'll cook up, you know, if it's ground beef or chicken. I'll buy, um, you know, however many packages or pounds. And I'll cook up the entire package even though I don't intend on using it all on that one meal. <clears throat> but the meals that I know, like um, tacos and burritos, you know, you make the ground beef, you season it, it's pretty much the same way. Spaghetti and lasagna, you know, it's pretty much the same seasoning. And so I will um, cook it up and freeze a portion, label it so that they know, and then I'll have the rest of the ingredients that go along with it. So they can just pull out the meat and then add um, the pasta or the potatoes or the rice and the veggies that go along with it. Same thing with chicken. You know, it'll probably be um, chicken breast that I cut up into chunks for the casseroles, the pasta casseroles, or um, tenderloins. Um, they can put them, um, they can fry them, and we make our own chicken fingers, or they can put them in the oven. So all that'll be, you know, pretty much done. I'll pre-do all of that, that way they don't have to worry about trying to figure out what it is um, they can do with it. And, um, It'll be pretty much simple things, you know, things that they can manage to do without spending a whole lot of time. Um, I'm going to let them, I'm working on a new recipe book, stuff that I make but just had never written down so that they can have, you know, instructions because they'll come in and they're cooking and they'll say, how, you know, what do I do with this or how do I, you know, do this. So stuff will already be in the book and they can just go in the book and look in the book and then what I'll let them do is pick out a certain um, amount of dishes and they can write my grocery list off that and I make sure that I stock up on those items um, over the next couple months that way they can have that but I don't anticipate having to you know spend days cooking and freezing up you know a lot of things I may start off and leave, you know, a couple dishes in the refrigerator that I know will keep in the refrigerator for a couple days, um, <clears throat> provided that the plan goes okay. Um, I can do that much. But if, um, you know, if they didn't cook, then, of course, I would, you know, go toward freezing more and things like that because I don't have family here, um, you know, to come and help. But we don't have to worry about that, you know. But, you know, if you, if you don't have to help, that would be the option for you just to start simplifying, making lists, leaving instructions, and um, trying to batch cook up meals. That way you don't spend so much time, you know, figuring out what you're going to eat. Um, as far as myself, I just have to make sure I have plenty of snacks, plenty of water, um, and other uh, beverages, crackers. Um, I'll pretty much eat stuff like fruits, veggies, turkey wraps, um, what else, hummus, chips, you know, things like that. I'm not a real big picky eater. So things that I can make, um, you know, the breakfast may be grits and eggs, you know, make sure I have some protein and iron and, you know, I'm good to go. Um, grilled cheese sandwich, you know, just whatever, something really quick that I can manage to do. And for that first week, if I happen to be by myself, I just make sure I have um, plenty of yogurt, plenty of cereal things that I don't have to stand there and cook or I'll just have somebody make me eggs the night before they scramble some eggs and put them in the you know in the container and all I have to do is heat them up 
and I don't have to worry about, you know, going in to make breakfast. Or they can do a breakfast casserole or some burritos on the weekend, and that way I have something in the morning that I don't have to go in and, you know, stand there and cook. <clears throat> because <clears throat> pretty much that first week I don't do any cooking or cleaning. I just, you know, stay in the bed. But um, honestly, I can say I will get up after that week. I won't. I still won't do too much, you know, in the way of housework. I'll do laundry. I won't, you know, vacuum, sweep, mop, that type of thing. But I have been known to drive. I will not drive, you know, taking um, pain medication. And pretty much by then, I don't need the pain medication. Um, I think pain management is something you have to get under control when you have a cesarean. You need to get that under control before you leave the hospital. If you're steadily complaining, you're in pain, then you don't need to leave. And um, you need to be completely honest when they ask you how, you know, what your pain level is. If it's a 10, say it's a 10. Don't wait until the last minute and say, oh, I don't want to take this pain medication because, you know, it's going to affect this or, you know, it's going to, going to do that to me. That's major surgery you're dealing with. I always took my pain medication every couple of hours. And, um, even when it wasn't working, you know, we would go up, we would change it, you know, modify it to where I was um, on morphine. And, I'm, you know, I have a really high tolerance for pain, so it had to be pretty bad for me to have to go on morphine and then get a pump because um, I've had to do that. You know, they, they're not going to offer you that pump, but if you know what you're doing and you're in that much pain, um, you want to self-medicate, you know, just let them know. You're not going to over-medicate because you can only get, you know, so much. <clears throat> you can take a hit every 10 minutes, basically. But um, it's not going to kill you, and you're not going to be addicted. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, if it, that, that's a big thing. If you're, you know, a wuss about it, don't leave that hospital after having a cesarean without maintaining that pain. Come home, get in the bed, don't do anything, don't feel bad about it, and take your medicine on time. Even if it's been four hours and you don't feel bad, take it. Every three, four hours, I think it's every four hours, don't skip. At least for that first two weeks, especially if you have not had a cesarean before, don't skip. Because nine times out of ten, you skip. Or you get up, oh, I feel fine, I want to do this, I want to do that. And then the next thing you know, you're having all kind of issues. You end up back in the hospital, you're leaving the baby at home, and that's a mess. So, but I'm rambling. Um, anywho, um, yeah, uh, you know, like I said, I have been known to drive. I've had to, um, when the babies were in the NICU after that first couple visits, I had to basically drive myself because they were still being nursed exclusively and I had to sit at, uh, at the hospital pretty much all day. I mean, I would pump at home and I would bring them milk, <clears throat> but I would save that, you know, they would give it to them overnight, um, you know, or whatever, and, um, you know, that worked out well, but I stayed with them during the day. and. Um, that helped them get out of the NICU and home twice as fast as if, you know, than if I was just, you know, going every now and then. Um, they were so uh, used to having me and being able to just exclusively nurse them. Um, rather than staying in there seven weeks, they came home at three or four weeks. So. Yeah, I did drive, and I'm not going to, you know, be doing anything major, especially if the kids are going to be out of school. I'm just going to sit here pretty much and relax. Um, but, yeah, other than that, um, the grocery hauls, like I said, as far as the meat, they're not going to change until probably around November. 
And then also another thing I'm going to do is um, Thanksgiving is coming up, so turkeys will be in abundance and cheap. So take advantage of that. I had a friend do that one year, although it wasn't um, Thanksgiving, but, you know, having that turkey, it went a long way. I mean, you could do a lot with turkey. Um, so you want to take advantage, get a couple turkeys, cut them up, and um, have fun with them. You know, there's, there's so many meals you can get out of turkeys and things like that. So take advantage of, uh, you know, those type of things that you can do. And if you have friends and neighbors that, you know, want to help and don't know how, ask them to cook and freeze things. And also, if you don't have the room, you know, in your own freezer, ask them if you can borrow theirs or ask them if they can cook and freeze things and put it in their freezer. That way, you know, they feel like they're helping you. And um, it is actually a help. You know, it's it's not that hard to, you know, prepare. Um, the biggest thing is just to make sure you have a list of really what you want and go off your list. And um, that'll help save a lot of headache, you know, because not everybody does everything the same. And it's already going to be hectic enough having a new baby. It's going to be overwhelming. If you happen to have postpartum right away, that's going to be a mess. Trying to breastfeed a baby, you know, a lot of people have problems. It's any kind of thing you think that would occur, you know, could occur. Um, like I said, just, you know, don't panic and accept the help that you get. You know, that's the biggest thing. Everybody is not going to do things the way you want. Everybody's not going to cook things the way you want. But, you know, you shouldn't be picky, pretty much. Um, and if you are that type of person, then good luck to you. Um, let's see, what else can I say about postpartum? Um, like I said, keep plenty of snacks, you know, on hand, quick quick snacks, but healthy snacks. Bars, I love bars. Granola bars, um, trail mix bars, you know, things like that. That's stuff that I pack in, um, in my hospital bag because I, um, you know, I just, I like to have a snack when I want a snack. I don't like to always wait for somebody to bring me something. Although, um, that's another thing. When you're in the hospital, you don't, <laughs> you may think that you have to bring a whole bunch. Um, but really you don't. You know, if you just ask the nurses, they'll bring you stuff. Um, you know, you just have to tell them what you want. Um, even with me staying in the hospital with the twins, I would eat, um, you know, in addition to lunch, I would always have a sandwich a couple of hours later, some chips and um, a drink and stuff. And, you know, they knew that that was like my second lunch because I would get hungry. And so I was always prepared and sent up with my regular lunch and just store it in the refrigerator. But, yeah, if you don't ask them, they're not just going to offer it to you. And you have to, you know, pretty much tell them what it is you want. Oh, excuse me. And um, they'll have it. But there's certain things, you know, certain things you know that the hospital won't have that you um, you just want to bring in yourself. And that's fine, too. But, yeah, I always keep snacks. And um, things in my bag, that way I have it. And um, especially if I get it beforehand, I just stick it in my bag because I don't want to leave it at home because somebody will eat it before I get home and then I'm looking for it and I don't have it. So that's another reason why I just pack it in my bag. But, yeah, I keep that. You know, you want to keep yogurt. Things that are really full of calcium energy. You know, they give you a quick boost so you can actually get up. You know, because sometimes you can't even get up to go to the bathroom, let alone, you know, go in there and grab something to eat. And you're thinking, okay, I got literally 30 seconds to get something to eat. And, you know, you got to get enough. So, um, you know, you can always keep that stuff on the table next to you 
or tucked in a drawer. Um, if you have smaller kids, you don't want them to mess with it. But, you know, stuff like that, I would keep that, especially breastfeeding. I would always get hungry during the night and didn't want to get up, so bottles of water and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if anybody has any any suggestions or um, ideas on what else I could do. You know, there may be something that I'm not thinking of or something I didn't mention. Um, you know, like I said, I'm pretty much going off of my experience and having cesareans and things like that and um, going into, you know, the hospital at different times of the year. So, yeah, uh-oh. Feel free to comment and let me know um, if you need more ideas on um meals you know there are plenty of uh recipes you know readily available on the internet you know you want to look for um freezer recipes casseroles soups chilies you know pretty much hearty recipes it's, it's going to be um fall winter you know in a couple weeks so everything's changing. You get to, you know, experiment with a whole different kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, ingredients, you know, vegetables and, you know, fruit's going to change. So it's a fun time, you know. Summer's eating light. Winter, you want to eat hearty. So yeah, a lot of things coming up, especially with the holidays and things like that, you'll always have something, you know, somebody's always having to get together, that's a good place to take advantage of freezing, um, and some other things, um, you could think about is, even if it's just a single portion left over from dinner, freeze it, you know, um, I do that periodically, and then say, you know, the next week, I take it out because I need lunch, and that's what I'm eating. Or, um, you know, nobody decides to eat dinner. And I want to eat dinner, but I don't want to cook. I'm not going to go buy anything. I'll take out that portion that I froze. So, you know, every little bit helps. I don't waste if I don't have to. You know, there's no need to waste food. Um, you know, I just make sure everything gets pretty much gets eaten and so um, you know I'm pretty much taking care of myself but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, I will come back with a pregnancy update shortly bye